Right. Now, since we've got to save the world, before we save Greece, there's no sense saving Greece if the world's going down the tubes. What? All right. So there's two things Greece has to do. It's got to help Fukushima. It's got to lead the world in stopping the pollution coming out of Fukushima. And nobody's doing anything. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Greece has to start what I call the CPC, which is the Civilian Protection Coalition. All right? And Greece can lead this. We need one country to take over and do that. So the CPC, the Civilian Protection Coalition, would be run and led by Greece. Greece. It would be a collection or a coalition of countries who want to participate in stopping the slaughter of civilians that's going on all over the planet. It happened in 50 countries last year. And this will be the biggest shame of our century when they look back from the future as we look back at the 15th century and 16th at the Inquisition, they will look back at the way we let people be slaughtered. Entire civilian populations with no arms being slaughtered by well-armed civilians. And it's snowballing, right? In the First World War, civilian casualties were 10 to 15 percent, which is already very high. Right? Then, guess what? In the Second World War, with the aerial bombing and the improved munitions, 35% of the deaths in the Second World War were civilians. All right? And then we get into the modern era, and today 99.5% of the deaths in so-called war are unarmed civilians being shot at by well-armed military and bombed by well-armed airplanes. And nobody's doing anything. The whole world is sitting around saying, oh, well, that's tough. Oh, they're shooting all those people, that's tough. As if there's nothing can be done. But here, the idea of the CPC is, right now with what you have on hand. This was Teddy Roosevelt's motto. And I discovered it in a cabin building book. Right? How to build a cabin. This was very important part of the entire grand strategy is this idea. Right now, with what you have on hand, there's no sense planning, we're going to do this, we're going to build this. What have we got now? Well, right now you've got 200 countries. Every one of them has at least one division of soldiers. So you've got 200 divisions around the world doing nothing with their thumbs up their ass. So the CPC says, okay, if you're interested, throw in one division. Now, here's how it works. Very important, a strategy involved. The, my ancestors, the Vikings, had a very interesting strategy and a secret weapon. The secret weapon was hard tack. It's their dry bread, which they now call waza bread. They're still selling it, making money on it, right? But you could put the waza bread in casks and carry it on board a boat. So you had food on the boat for months. So they early on developed a very interesting strategy, which Napoleon later adopted, which is the point is not how many soldiers you have, it's how many soldiers are at the point of the battle. If you've got 10,000 soldiers over the hill, so what? How many people are actually fighting? How many people can you get to the battle? Okay. So what they would do, you know, the, the Vikings had these drakars, which were these large ships with 30, 35 men on board. Really, very, just big canoes, really. And uh, so they would go up and down the coast of Europe and go up a river. So a Viking boat would land at your village and steal a few cows and maybe rape a few women. And if you got a fighting party organized to fight with them, they'd run. They wouldn't fight because you outnumbered them. So they'd go camp offshore, they'd run and like cowards jump in their boat, disappear, and then they'd park offshore at the mouth of the river in the ocean, and there were always Viking ships going up and down the coast. So seven or eight, ten days later, and they'd sit out there, eat their hard tack and catch fish. And then ten days later, five 
Viking boats would show up in your village. And once again, if you got enough men together to fight them, they all jump in their boats and be gone in a split second, right? And so this was the strategy by which the Vikings conquered Ireland, Scotland, Sicily, most of Italy, most of Normandy in the space of 50 years. And the greatest example, if you believe this strategy doesn't work, in 848 in Paris, the Louvre had already been built to protect against the Vikings. And they came up the river from the Atlantic, 800 dracars, 30,000 fighting men. <laughs> 848, they came back in 878 and 888, right? Guess who won? All right. Well, obvious, right? And by the way, if you want to understand the Middle Ages, when they came in 848, the 800 drachars, the 30,000 Vikings, the Archbishop of France hid on the Ile de la Cité here with the four most valuable things in Christendom. You know what they were? four bodies. The body of Saint-Denis, the body of Saint-Genevieve, Saint -Genevieve, the body of Saint-Gervais, and the body of Saint-Severin. Okay? Why? Well, it's very simple. They had no penicillin in the year 800. Right? So if you got cancer, you got a tumor, you died. Right? And the church did not permit magic, except one kind of magic. The body of a holy person was magic. And they built silver relics to put in a finger of a saint, right? And they walked 2,000 miles to get next to the body of a saint in Santiago, right? So the only way you could get well was getting close to the body of a saint. So there was the archbishop with the four cadavers. Right? So that, then you understand the Middle Ages a little better, right? And when I went to Mont Saint Michel 50 years ago, the guide said we had more tourists in the year 1100 than we do now. This was back in the 1950s, right? When when we didn't have as many tourists, but still, you know, he said, look at the size of these entry rooms. Look at the size of these hallways, right? The place was swamped, Mont Saint Michel. They must have had some relics up there, obviously. All right. So. Uh, so therefore, you do the same thing with your corps, with your civilian protection corps. You have some government start bombing people in one of its areas, like it's happening in Ukraine right now, right? You have a meeting of the coalition, and the Greeks say, we're going in, who else? You go in with three or four divisions, right? If you run into any resistance, whoop, pull out. Come back with 10 divisions, okay? NATO's only 11 divisions. You got the biggest army in the world if enough... If, com if 20 countries join the coalition out of the 200 on the planet to protect civilians, you now have the biggest armed forces in the world. That's it. 